Hello, Jacksonites, and welcome. To, yep, you read the title right. I'm getting my second Godzilla review out of the way. Today, I will be re-reviewing the, in my opinion, 1971 mindfuckery, nutty masterpiece kaiju film, Godzilla vs. Hidora, directed by Yoshimitsu Bano. Hang on. Okay. Um, so, like with my... <laughs> oh, come on. Really? With the cake? Enough with the cake. And yes, Mittenator, this movie... Wait. Okay, yeah, it is Hedor. I thought it was my guy get this for a sec. Um, so, like with my Godzilla Raids Again review, I'm doing this out of necessity because I noticed my original... Uh, review for Hedora, <clears throat> it was unwatchable because the audio was two seconds behind in the video, and, and that drove me absolutely insane. So I deleted that original video, and here I am doing this re-review now. Uh, though it's kind of funny that two of my favorite Godzilla movies, uh, their videos keep getting deleted, so it just kind of seems like fate. Uh, just keeps throwing me a bone saying, here, talk about this movie that you really like uh, again. So thanks, Fate. Yeah, they allow, that's a lot of fish, guy. Um, where was I? So Godzilla vs. Hedora. I'll just jump right into my personal history. Godzilla vs. Hedora. Um, I first saw when... Netflix was first still a, a, a thing when it just came out and it was still competing with Blockbuster. I remember uh, renting Godzilla vs. Hedorah from Netflix through its mail service. And it took like two weeks for the fucker to show up, which, which drove me... There he is. Which drove me absolutely insane. Um... But when I finally got my hands on it, Godzilla's Hedora didn't really blow me away when I first saw the film. I mean, I enjoyed the movie, and I thought it was a uh, an interesting, uh, certainly a unique Godzilla movie, and I and I did enjoy it. Uh, but then the movie just escaped me for a long, 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 long time. Uh. To the point where I was kind of getting starved of the film because I, I remember I wanted to see the film again because I saw some reviews of it and it uh, and it got me in the mood of rewatching the film. Uh, the, when I first viewed it, it was on the the TriStar 50th Anniversary Godzilla DVDs, which which let's face it, those those ones actually aren't so amazing. Um, but thankfully, Kraken re-released a couple Godzilla movies. Uh, and this is actually the first one that I bought and the first one that I watched. Uh, I, I The first two that I bought were Hidora and Gigan because I, I wanted those movies again. Uh, then I then I purchased uh, Return to Godzilla. And then finally I got the uh, Sea Monster Kraken DVD. Happy 200 fish. Oh yeah, I have 200 subs now. Uh, I'll be doing a Q&A video uh, for 200 subs pretty soon. Um, would I like to see Hidora be the third monster in Godzilla vs. Kong? I mean, that'd be kind of interesting, but I think that would be pretty out of left field. I actually think it'd be more appropriate if it was Biolanti. And thank you on the 200 subs. I'll 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 get on that Q&A uh, in the next couple of days. Anyway... So the first Kraken disc that I got was Godzilla vs. Hedorah, and I sat down to rewatch the film, and I just remember having a giant ball with the film. Uh, all the nostalgia that I had when I wa first watched the movie for that time period of when I per uh, rented it from Netflix just came flooding back to me uh, like a tidal wave, and I, I rewatched the movie three times uh, over the next three days. 
Um, and I just love the movie more and more and more and more each time that I viewed the film. And I just, oh, God, I love this movie. I absolutely love Godzilla vs. Hidora. And I, I do consider it to be both one of my favorite Godzilla movies and one of my favorite kaiju films. Um, which is very controversial amongst a lot of Godzilla fans. Not that I really give a shit. But Godzilla vs. Hidora, I've noticed, is another really contentious film in the Godzilla franchise. There are those who hate it, uh, which I'm pretty sure is the majority uh, of people. The majority of Godzilla fans don't really care for Godzilla vs. Hidora. Uh, like some of, I've heard some people call it one of the top five worst Godzilla movies ever made. Uh, and then I've also seen the minority of people who who defend the film and say it's not that bad. Um, it's not that bad. It's kind of an underrated Godzilla movie. It's an underrated monster movie. And of course, me being me, I fall into that minority. I, I, it, I think it is a very, very, very underrated Godzilla movie and underrated kaiju movie, which is why I rank it uh, or as both one of my favorite Godzilla movies and as one of my favorite kaiju films. That being said, however, like with Godzilla Raids again, I will also be the first to admit that Godzilla vs. Hidora does have a lot of problems. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's some kind of unsung masterpiece. Well, I do, but I don't think it's a flawless film. It is not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so with that being said... Let's jump into the plot of Godzilla vs. Hedorah. The plot for Godzilla vs. Hedorah is actually pretty simple. The microscopic alien life form known as Hedorah feeds on Earth's pollution and grows into a poisonous, acid-secreting sea monster. After Hedorah sinks an oil tanker and attacks Dr. Toru Yano and his young son Ken Yano, uh, who ends up scarring half of the doctor's face, Hidora's toxic existence is revealed to the public. Ken Yano has visions of Godzilla fighting the world's pollution by rising out of the water in his Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster suit and setting fire to the seas around him. And he ends up insisting that Godzilla will come to hum humanity's aid to fight against Hidora. Hidora metamorphoses into an amphibious form, uh, which allows it to move on land and feed on additional sources of pollution. Hidora is then confronted by Godzilla, uh, this being the first monster fight at night. And Hidora is easily overpowered by Godzilla, and he retreats back into a sea after a fairly, fairly decently long but very length, uh, messy, not lengthy, messy fight. And during this fight, several pieces of its new body are flung nearby, which then crawl back into the sea to grow anew and allow the monster to become even more powerful. It returns shortly thereafter in a flying saucer-like shape and demonstrates newer, even deadlier forms, which it can switch between at will. In its flying form, Hidora is able to secrete a deadly... Uh, gas, which is similar to sulfuric acid, and also carbon monoxide, which uh, burns the skin, chokes people, and dissolves them at the bones. Thousands of people die in Hidora's raids, and even Godzilla is overwhelmed by Hidora's poisonous emissions. And as hope sinks, a party is thrown on Mount Fuji by a hundred people or so, uh, just a bunch of hippies, to celebrate one last day of life before uh, humanity succumbs to Hidora. However, Ken and his two friends, Yukio Kiyuchi and Miki Fujiyama and other partygoers realize that Godzilla and Hidora have come to Mount Fuji as well for a final fight to the death. Uh, Dr. Yano and his wife, Toshi, have determined that drying out Hidora's body may destroy this otherwise unkillable creature. Uh, and the JSDF swiftly constructs two gigantic electrodes for this purpose. Um, but their power is cut off by Godzilla and Hidora's fight. And Godzilla e energizes these electrodes with his atomic ray, which ends up dehydrating Hidora's outer, outer body. Excuse me. 
Edora sheds his outer body and takes flight to escape. However, in one of the most infamous scenes in all of Godzilla history, uh, Godzilla propels himself through the air with his atomic breath to give chase. Oh, boy. Godzilla drags Hidora back to the electrodes and continues to dehydrate it until Hidora is finally killed. Godzilla tears apart Hidora's dried-out body and dehydrates him even further until there is nothing remain of Hidora but dust. Godzilla returns to the sea, but not before glaring threatening, threateningly at the surviving humans whose pollution spawned Hidora. Ken bids Godzilla... Godzilla goodbye, and the movie ends with another potential Hedorah rising out of the muck. Uh, and the movie ends with a title si title card saying, and yet another one. Thus ending the movie into the sequels that shamefully never got made. And whoa, hello. Lots of comments here. Do you feel this movie is as rushed as Atragon because it also took 35 days to make? No. Doctor becomes Two-Face. Oh, get out of here with the goddamn Batman jokes. Uh, Virgin Aaron Eckhart versus the Chad Tommy Lee Jones. What? Do you feel this movie has the highest human body count in a Godzilla movie? That may be debatable, but I couldn't really answer that question. Does the ending remind you of Advent of Legion? No, not well. No, not really. So how about this plot? Well, you sure as hell can't say that this movie is an original. Yoshimitsu Bano, the director of this film, and also directed the Toho Tokusatsu film Prophecies of Nostradamus, was brought on to uh, excuse me be the next potential like number one big director for Toho um and he certainly does bring his own very unique style to the Godzilla series he himself is a big Godzilla fan and he absolutely loved the original Godzilla he thought it was just a a, a masterpiece of pure Japanese cinema not just sci-fi or kaiju films but simply japanese cinema um also funny enough he came up with the idea of hidora um fuck he came up with the idea for hidora because he was flying over a city in japan and he looked down and he noticed that the place was so polluted that he could not even see the streets. He could only see the towers. Kind of similar to Tomoyuki Tanaka uh, coming up with the idea for Godzilla, looking down at the ocean, coming back from some kind of movie that fell apart, um, looked down and said, what if a giant monster was reawakened by atomic testing, rose out of the ocean? So I, I do respect Yoshimitsu Bano for that. Let, let me get into some of the, uh, the backstory for... Godzilla vs. Hedora. But to, to quickly wrap this up, I love this movie's story. I think it is very, very original. It's very unique. It's very engaging. It definitely doesn't feel like the typical Godzilla movie. Not that there's any any issue that I have with the typical Godzilla movie. That certainly is Godzilla vs. Gigan. But I think this the, the movie being as unique as it is makes this movie stand out uh, much more in a positive way in my eyes. And to answer your question, Sean, no, I have not seen Aquaman yet. I will be seeing it sometime next week, however, which I'm pretty, I'm looking forward to it pretty bad, pretty badly. Um, so anyway, the backstory to Godzilla vs. Hedora, I've gone into a lot of depth or in-depth talk about why Japan at the, or, uh, why Toho at this time was going through a lot of financial distress. TV was killing Toho and Toho for a long time, never really, never really figured out how to combat TV killing them. Um, so they saw Godzilla as their main money ma money maker. So they brought Godzilla out of retirement after Godzilla's Revenge being a two year hiatus, and they 
started make, cranking out Godzilla movies to make the money again. And Yoshimitsu Bano was brought on to be the next Ishiro Honda, essentially, since in 1970, when, when uh, production on Space Amoeba was finished, uh, Ishiro Honda quit because Fumio Tanaka removed a, which is another producer who um, I don't believe was related to Tomiyuki Tanaka. Fumio Tanaka had disgraced them essentially by removing a little piece of uh, a, a piece of title card at the be or the a title card at the beginning of Space of Me, but that simply said in memory of Eiji Tsuburaya, who had just passed away early in 1970. Uh, I believe it was lung cancer. So Ishiro Honda quit. Sanomasa Arakawa quit. Teriyoshi Nakano. No, not Teriyoshi Nakano. Um, oh, fuck. What the hell was his name? Shinichi Sekizawa quit. And a lot of Toho people uh, quit because of Fumio Tanaka doing that. So Yoshimitsu Bano was brought in to be the next Ishiro Honda. And he was told by Tomiyuki Tanaka, "You, we need to make a new, new Godzilla movie. We want it to be more geared towards kids, which Yoshimitsu Bano did not like. Uh, but they also said, and yes, I did shave. Uh, Tomiki Tanaka said to Yoshimitsu Bano, uh, we want Godzilla to be more like the hero in this film, which Tomiki Tanaka did agree with. However, during the production of Godzilla vs. Hidora, which, by the way, Godzilla vs. Hidora is, uh, was a rushed film. It had, only, it had a low budget. In U.S. money, it was equivalent to about $250,000. And it had only 35 days to shoot with just one crew working on the entire film, which is insane. Because, I mean, I give Atragon a lot of shit because it is, it's such a rushed movie. And let's just face it, guys, Atragon's not a good movie. Um, <sighs> at least it had four crews of people working on such a rushed film. Here, there was only one, to which I'm amazed because I don't think this movie feels rushed at all. But that's, again, that's just me. God damn, my back fucking itches. Itch, 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 itch. Um, but also during the production of... Um, fuck. Godzilla's Hidora. Tomiyuki Tanaka suffered a heart attack. I uh, didn't kill him, but he was hospitalized for, for a while after that. Uh, and he brought in Ishiro Honda to watch the rough cut of... God's over Sidora. We don't know what Ishiro Honda thought of the film, but apparently Tomiyuki Tanaka absolutely hated God's over Sidora. Uh, and said that it ruined Godzilla for every kaiju fan out there to Yoshimitsu Bano. And he made and he said to Yoshimitsu Bano, you will never work in Toho ever again. And unfortunately, after Godzilla's Hidora, despite Godzilla's Hidora being a massive hit both in Japan but especially overseas, uh, in overseas it was released on a double bill with the eco horror film Frogs. Unfortunately, uh, Yoshimitsu Bano really never did work in Toho ever again. He did work on Prophecies of Nostradamus, uh, both as a director and as its its co writer in 1974. Um, but he never got the chance to direct a movie again. He never got to direct the sequel to Godzilla vs. Uh, Hidora that he so desperately wanted to make. Um, which was going to be called Godzilla vs. Red Moon, but that was scrapped and became Daigoro vs. Goliath, which apparently is a horrendous film. And they also plan to make a new mo movie after that called Godzilla vs. the Space Monsters Earth Defensive Directive. But then that became scrapped and then became The Return of King Ghidorah, which also was scrapped and ended up becoming Godzilla vs. Gigan. Still one of my favorite Godzilla movies. But D Yoshimitsu Bano, unfortunately, was so miserably screwed by Tomiyuki Tanaka once he finished Godzilla vs. Ghidorah. And as I said in my original review... When I heard that, I lost a lot of respect for uh, Tomiyuki Tanaka. Some will defend him by saying he just was not in the right mental state at the time. Uh, but regardless, I mean, I don't know if there are any any reports that say Tomiyuki Tanaka regretted treating Yoshimitsu Bano the way that he did. But then again, if he did regret treating Yoshimitsu Bano that way, 
he would have brought Yoshimitsu Bano back in uh, to Toho and let him direct another Godzilla movie. So I kind of feel like he did not regret treating Yoshimitsu Bano the way that he did. So when I heard that, I ain't going to lie, I did lose a lot of respect for Tomiyuki Tanaka. I will say I I will say I am totally grateful that he came up with Godzilla, which is debatably my favorite fiction, which is debatably my fi favorite fictional character of all time. But still, I did lose a lot of respect for Tomi Kitanaka for the way that he treated Yoshimitsu Bano. Um, fucking asshole. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the pros and cons of Godzilla versus Hidora, shall we? Uh, da, 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 da. pro number one are the decent characters. This movie doesn't have a fantastic cast. Um, we have Akira Yamauchi, which I swear Akira is the most common Japanese name in existence. But uh, he plays Doctor Yano, and he's a fairly likable uh, scientist protagonist. He is a scientist. Um, but he's not like a condescending scientist, uh, and he's not a know-it-all, bland, boring scientist. He just so happens to be a scientist who has a certain um, area of expertise, which I'm pretty sure that is um, – which I'm pretty sure it's sea life. Uh, so he's probably a marine biologist. And um, – He's fairly likable, uh, and also his dub, his his dub voice does a good job for him too. But he's fairly likable. He's not condescending. He's proactive in this situation. He, even though he's injured for most of the movie, he does his best to contribute um, his intellect and his ideas and his knowledge to solving the Hidora topic at hand. Uh, and he's he's uh, he's also very sympathetic because he gets half of his face burned off by Hidora. So you got to feel bad for him there. But uh, I like, I like Dr. Yano. He's kind of an underrated character in Godzilla, in Godzilla movies. Um, so yeah, I like him. He's fairly serviceable. Motherfucker. My back itches. Uh, let's see. We have Hiroyuki Kawase as Ken. Coming off of Godzilla's Revenge, we have another kid character. Thank God, though, that Ken is not nearly as annoying as Ichiro from Godzilla's Revenge. Um, I actually don't find Ken annoying at all. Uh, I just, I actually think he's very tolerable. He's got some bad dialogue, both in the Japanese dialogue and in the English dub. Bang! That's wild! And I'm not going to say he's one of the greatest uh, child a actors in Japanese cinema ever. I'll, I'll probably say that's the kid from Gamera the Brave. Wow, something in, in a Gamera movie that's better than a Godzilla movie. Who would think? Um, but I do like that Ken, is, he's kind of a geeky shut-in. Uh, he clearly loves his father, and he's clearly a big Godzilla fan. Um, but he's not an annoying little brat like Ichiro is. He doesn't needlessly and stupidly run out and to, to get himself in danger just to create fake tension. Um, he tries to do the smart thing throughout the film. He tries to help his dad throughout the film too. And overall, I just I like Ken. He he's not annoying. He's not uh, a brat like Ichiro is. He's not useless, and he doesn't create fake tension. So. <laughs> That's good, at least. Uh, let's see. There's actually not really much to say about the rest of the cast. They're, they're just kind of serviceable. Um, I've seen worse Godzilla movie casts, but i also seen have admittedly seen a little bit better. But they're serviceable. There's no annoying characters. There's no um, useless characters. There's overall, the cast is just kind of there. Uh, but they're not terrible. Pro number two is the creepy atmosphere throughout the film. Now, I wouldn't quite call this movie uh, a horror film, but I definitely do see people calling this movie having some horror elements because I would definitely say that Hedora is a very violent, scary, and disgusting monster. 
I'd also go as far to say that he – well, I'll talk about that when I get to Hedor a little bit. Um, but th this movie definitely does have an overall a very creepy, trippy, mindfuckery atmosphere, which I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But um, the music certainly does help when talking about this movie's creepy atmosphere. Uh, but I'll talk about that when I when I actually do talk about the music. But I like the slow. The, this movie does have a bit of a slower pace, uh, and it has a bit of a. It just has a creepy overtone throughout the entire film that makes Hedora feel that much more threatening, and it makes this situation feel a lot more grim and dooming and despairing. Uh, like the movie, for a good majority of it, has like this helpless, disgusting, polluted. Like, like you're being suffocated and swallowed up by garbage and sludge and nothingness feel. Uh, so it definitely is very, it's very creepy to watch. It kind of sends chills up your spine and it makes you feel like you're being suffocated a little bit. So I definitely do like the creepy atmosphere that they convey in this film. Um, like it's not going to make you go afraid to go to bed or anything. Don't get me wrong. But overall, um, I like this movie's creepy atmosphere. It makes this movie feel that much more unique. It also is somewhat reminiscent of Matango uh, a little bit, which this movie actually was written, I believe, by Takashi Kimura, who, well, it was co-written by both Yoshimitsu Bano and Takashi Kimura. It was actually Ishiro Honda, apparently, who recommended Takashi Kimura write this. This is definitely uh, a case where Takashi Kimura was definitely the right person to go with when talking about this movie because this is a darker Godzilla movie. Uh, so that is awesome. And Hijack. Uh, so definitely one movie where I would agree that Takashi Kimura was definitely the go-to decision to write the film. Uh, and I'd actually go as far to say this is Takashi Kimura's either second or third best script because he also wrote Matango and he wrote Rodan as well. Um and Frankenstein versus Baragon. So I'm not entirely sure. Though definitely those are my four favorite uh, Takashi Kimura scripts. Godzilla vs. Hidora, Rodan, Matango, and Frankenstein vs. Baragon. Um, but anyway, yeah, I love this creepy atmosphere. And again, it's very reminiscent of Matango. Pro number three is the film score. They're is no Akira Fukube traits used in this movie. It's a, it's a completely new and original score. And this movie's score was done by Richiro Manabe, who, of course, was a Japanese film composer who did numerous science fiction, horror, and kaiju films drawing from jazz and dissonant modernism. Uh, and his scores, particularly the ones in the 70s, use electric guitar, pipe organ, the piccolo, and keyboard synthesizer music. Richard Manabe has kind of been called a poor man's version of Masaru Sato. Uh, and I would definitely say that is a very apt description of Richard Manabe. I'm not going to go as far to say that Richard Manabe is one of the greatest film Japanese film composers of all time, but he definitely is one of the more unique ones. Um, this is the only Godzilla movie. Well, no, he also scored Godzilla vs. Megalon. So this, he scored two Godzilla movies, Hidora and Megalon. And he also scored the three Toho Dracula films, which are all terrible. And they sound like porn soundtracks. Yeah, definitely. Like if you were to watch Godzilla vs. Hidora and then also watch uh, the first Dracula, the first Toho Dracula movie, the, the two movies sound exactly the same because Richard Manabe scored both films. Um, but the score here is very, very, very good. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a pleasant score to listen to. It's certainly in the context of the film, it's not a very pleasant score to listen to. There are some catchy themes and there also are some ridiculous themes like the main Godzilla theme. Um, but there's a lot of moments in the movie where the score is very, very, very eerie. And again, that helps in the creepy atmosphere. Um, like whenever God's not Godzilla, whenever Hedora is by himself and he's moving around, um, 
he he just kind of slinks around and slumps around almost like a zombie uh and the the music is very 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 fitting it's very creepy it's very subtle uh and accentuates and aids whenever hedora is on screen and makes him feel that much more threatening so while i wouldn't necessarily say this is one of the greatest godzilla scores ever made I don't think this is one of the worst Godzilla scores ever made either. Um, so yeah, I like this movie score. Definitely a uh, definitely a plus. Uh, pro number four is Hidora himself. Um, I love Hidora. I wouldn't quite say he's one of my favorite uh, Godzilla kaiju. But Hidora, I feel, is an extremely underrated monster. And I go as also as far to say this, aside from Mecha Godzilla, I would say that Hidora is Godzilla's most challenging adversary. Um, say what you want about Destroya and King Ghidorah. I mean, sure, they get they put up decent fights against Godzilla, but I would actually say that Godzilla gets his ass kicked the most by Hidora. So, yeah, chew on that. Uh, Hidora is such a badass fucking monster to me. I love his design. He clearly looks like he's just a walking genetic amalgamation of various sludge and, and pollution and bones and just all this messy frick a frack. Um, and he definitely looks like a disgusting monster. Um, so I love Hidora. I think he's very threatening. He's very intimidating. He puts up a great fight against Godzilla, and he whips Godzilla's ass in this film. Uh, so I love Hidora. He is a total badass, very underrated Godzilla monster, and he should be in more. Um, he should be in more Godzilla movies, in my opinion. And I also do think he would work as a monster verse monster. Um, that you'd have to really, you had to kind of tweak him around a little bit, not ma and not make him an alien. I'll get to that when I get to the cons. But I love Hidora. I think he's an awesome monster. He's one of the most underrated Godzilla kaiju out there. Um, and I also feel so bad for. Um, hang on. Okay, hang on. Um, sorry, I, I got caught up reading something. I feel so bad for the suit actor for um God, where the hell is it? For Hidora. It was actually Kenpachiro Satsuma, uh, who would later go on to review or not review, he he would go on to play godzilla in the heisei series it was all so the hidora suit weighed about 300 pounds the final hidora suit the when he's in his fourth and final form uh weighed about a 120 no about 320 pounds and actually during during filming of Godzilla's Hidora, Kempachiro Satsuma suffered appendicitis, and he had to have an appendectomy uh, done on him while he was in the fucking Hidora suit because of the amount of time that would taken to extract him from that that suit. They just had to cut open the suit and extract his appendix uh, while he was in the fucking Hidora suit. So damn good job, Kempachiro. Uh, for for sticking in there through this fucking suit, I feel so bad, but I definitely hope he got some kind of a pay uh, pay raise for doing that. Uh, so yeah, poor him. But anyway, um, yeah, here here we are. 
It was also during this operation that Satsuma learned that painkillers had absolutely no effect on him. So poor guy. I hope he got some kind of bonus. But overall, I love Hidora. I think he's an awesome monster. Uh, pro number five, this is a new one uh, for this for this list, is Godzilla. Of course, Godzilla is awesome in every movie that he's in. But here, I think he is particularly awesome. This is the first time that we see Godzilla as the full-blown superhero. He, he's been kind of an anti-hero. Not kind of. He's been an anti-hero since Ghidra, Three-Headed Monster. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Not counting. Ugh. Not counting Godzilla's Revenge. So that'd be six movies. But not counting Godzilla's Revenge. It'd be five films as an anti-hero. This is the first time that Godzilla is a full-blown superhero. And I love it. I think it's a very good introduction. He's kind of a bit more of a goofy superhero this time around, which is something that they kind of refine in Godzilla versus Gigan. But here, the introduction of the superhero Godzilla, I think it's very appropriate. It's very well done. Godzilla definitely does feel like he's trying to save the world and trying to save the He's trying to save humanity, not humanity specifically, but of course he's trying to save humanity. And Godzilla tries his goddamnedest to take down Hidora, and he gets the ever living shit beaten out of him because of it. But he also still beats the shit out of Hidora. Uh, he tosses Hidora left and right. He tears uh, pieces of Hidora all over the, uh, off and throws them all over the place. Rips his hands through Hidora's body. Rips out uh, one of, or not rips out, but burns out one of Hidora's eyes uh, and literally ends up tearing Hidora to pieces and incinerating him. So Godzilla beats the ever living shit out of, <laughs> out of Hidora. And it's, it's so fun to watch. And Godzilla himself is so fun to watch in this movie. It's not even funny. Some may say that Godzilla kind of suffers from big gun syndrome in this movie, which Kind of yes and no. I don't think it's as bad here. I think he suffers, he really suffers from big gun syndrome in Godzilla versus Megalon, and especially Godzilla versus, or uh, Terra Mecha Godzilla. So, but I definitely do feel the aspects of big gun syndrome for Godzilla here, but I don't think they're that bad. I think they're, they're tolerable. But Godzilla is a total badass in this movie, and I absolutely love this incarnation of Godzilla. For the first introduction of the superhero Godzilla, couldn't have done a better job. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Pro number six is the nutty mind fuckery of this film, as I list that in my pros and cons. Some don't like the nutty mind fuckery of this movie. They say it just kind of feels like you're watching a Godzilla acid trip. Yes, but also no. I actually think that makes the movie that much more enjoyable. Sure, you can just sit back and laugh at how fucking weird the movie is, um, which I also do. But I <clears throat> excuse me. But I also sit back and watch the movie and just enjoy how weird it is. I love how weird this movie is. And again, it makes this movie feel so much more unique. You can't say that any other movie before or since Godzilla vs. Hedora had tried this level of mindfuckery. And I think this movie is, is that much better for it. Um, so I enjoy the nutty mind fuckery. There are an, there is one aspect of the nutty mind fuckery that I don't like, which I will get into when I get to the cons. But overall, I like the nutty mind fuckery. Uh, pro number, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the monster battles. There's only kind of two. There's the first one where Godzilla fights the amphibious Hedora uh, at night, which that's a fun fight. There's the brief scuffle with Godzilla or with Godzilla versus Hidora when Hidora is in his flying form. Uh, Hidora just kind of rams into Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla knocks Hidora down and smashes his hand into Hidora's head. Then Hidora just flies off and lets Godzilla choke on his farts. And then there's the final fight uh, at Mount Fuji with Godzilla versus final form Hidora. Uh, which is one of my all-time favorite Godzilla fights uh, in the entire franchise. It's very long. I'd, I'd go as far as say it's probably 15 to maybe even 18 minutes long. 
and it makes up the entire third act of the film. Uh, which I have to say, the third act of the movie is one of the greatest pieces of Godzilla cinema ever, in my opinion. It is so goddamn fun, so goddamn entertaining. I love this fight. It never gets stale, it never gets old, and it also is kind of refreshing to see Godzilla actually have a challenge. Uh, and as I've said, I think Godzilla gets the most hellacious beating in this entire franchise. He gets the skin on one of his hands burned off. He gets one of his eyes burned out. He gets patches of skin burned all over his his body. Uh, he gets suffocated a couple of times. He gets covered literally in shit. But even through all this abuse, and he gets burned by Hidora's eye lasers a couple of times, through all this abuse and all of this hell and all of this torture, Godzilla still keeps going, and he ultimately does defeat Hidora, and obviously proving once again that he is the true king of the monsters. So the monster fights in this movie are very entertaining, and they're very well done. I think it's some of uh, Haru Nakajima's best monster fighting in all of his career as a uh, as a uh, suit actor for kaiju films, including Ultraman. And the last pro that I have, which is pro number eight, uh, is the, the special effects. They're good. I wouldn't say they're absolutely outstanding, but I do think the special effects here are very well done. The pseudimation is great. The miniatures look all right. Well, there's, yeah. No, the miniatures look good. The wire work is decent. The optical effects for Godzilla's atomic breath and Hidora's eye laser, they're fine. All the practical sludge slime effects, they definitely look good. They're very convincing. They don't, I don't see any, uh, I think it was just like a tube that was leaking out fluid to gush all over stuff, like in Hidora's eye or uh, in Hidora's ass when he's shitting all over uh, Godzilla when he's in that pit. Um, the only one that looks a little too noticeable is that it's obvious that there's like this nipple tube that spits out a glob of sludge that on Hidora's body. That's a little obvious. That's just like a, like an air canister that has a glob of sludge in it that just spits it out. But, oh, and the matte paintings look really good. The fight scenes that take place at night are the best, obviously, because at night you can hide a lot of the flaws in the effects. But also night kind of gives it its own unique feel and its own creepy atmosphere. So I like the fact that the final fight takes place at night. And overall, the, the special effects in this film are very, very well done. The cinemation looks great. The Godzilla suit looks really good. Uh, Hidora's suit, he, all of Hidora's suits look really good. But the only form that I kind of don't care for is the flying form. I think it looks a little stupid. But And also the wire work on um, uh, Hidora's flying form was definitely pretty good. Um, so Terry Nakano, for this being his first Godzilla movie, I believe, where he was the special effects supervisor and director, Terry Nakano does a pretty good job for his first Godzilla movie. Uh, not his best effects. I still say that's from Return of Godzilla, but Terry Nakano, you did great for this one. So with all these good things to say about Godzilla vs. Hedora, let's jump into the cons. Con number one is the annoying theme song. Oh, This movie has a theme song called Save the Earth, which plays constantly throughout the entire film. It is so goddamn annoying. It's one of the most annoying kaiju theme songs I have ever heard in my entire life. It makes the, the opening song to the X from Outer Space almost tolerable. Again, tease, tease. I'll talk about that later. Um, but I absolutely hate the, the theme song for this movie, Save the Earth. It is so annoying and so degrading. And by the end of the movie, you're so tired of listening to it, you almost want to cut your damn ears off. Um, con number two is the sloppy editing that's done throughout this movie. Some of it I do feel is intentional to make the nutty mind fuckery that much more nutty and mind fuckery. But sometimes the movie is so sloppily edited that you can barely tell what the hell is going on on screen. Um, and, I'll, some, and also sometimes the, uh, 
monster fights are somewhat poorly edited. One of my one big example is when Godzilla is flinging Hidora, uh, and they're spinning him around and around and around and around to throw Hidora over like an Ultraman technique. Um, the footage is super sped up, and it's so noticeable that this footage is sped up. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was an accident, but I, I feel like that was some sloppy editing because it, it just it's very shaky to watch and just it takes you out of the movie because it just looks so ridiculous. Um, and there's lots of moments where there's like multiple panels that show up on screen and then it goes to panel, then color circle, panel, color circle, panel, color circle. Like some of the editing in this movie is very, very sloppy. It's very, very kitschy. And it just looks it looks pretty bad. So <laughs> yeah, this movie got some bad editing. Con number three is Hedora's sloppy origin. I would have much rather preferred if Hedora was Hedora has two kind of origins in this movie. It's theorized that Hedora is either a just some kind of life form that spawned from Earth's pollution, and it's basically Mother Nature's way of saying you're polluting too much, so here's a monster to come in and kill y'all. Or two is that he's an alien that landed on Earth somehow uh, and then started feeding on radiation. It was mutated by all the, the – or not radiation, but all the pollution. It was mutated by all the pollution on Earth and just grew to become what he is. I, for me, it, it kind of suffers from Godzilla versus Space Godzilla syndrome where you, you pose two ideas uh, and you don't really confirm which is which. Just kind of like pick one or the other. For me personally, I would have much rather preferred if they had just gone with that he's uh, in some kind of life form that spawned because of Earth's pollution, not an alien. I don't really see Hidora as being an alien kaiju. That's just me, though. Um, so I think it would be much better off if he was some kind of life form that spawned from pollution. Um, so that, but that's just me personally. Pick one or the other. And the last con that I have with Godzilla vs. Hedorah is, yes, of course, the one that everybody talks about the most with this movie <sighs> is the extremely forced, extremely shoved down your throat environmental messages throughout this film. Oi. This may as well just be a Godzilla PSA uh, commercial because, holy fuck, there are so many beauty shots of polluted oceans and polluted rivers and garbage and junk that co that collects at the bottom of the ocean uh and all the just all this nasty shit that's all throughout the entire planet because pollution is just so bad uh all the beauty shots of pollution i mean if you if you had a dollar for every which one of those was in here you'd be a fucking millionaire because the pollution shots are just utterly insane and there, there's the, the message is so shoved down your throat and it's so in your face and it's so blatantly obvious. You couldn't even be more blatantly obvious if you tried. It is so shoved down your throat. It's shoved down your throat and it's shoved up your ass, pulled out from your throat and then shoved up your ass again and then shoved down your throat again and then just festers like a nasty pile of sludge in your stomach. It is so goddamn forced. Like really a Shimitsubano. What the fuck? I don't mean to insult somebody who passed away, but damn, dude. You could have cut down a little bit. And it's a carryover into Godzilla vs. Gigan, a little bit in Godzilla vs. Megalon. Um, but the, oh, the, the, fire, the Save the Earth environmental message. Oh, and that's another thing, too. The fucking, uh, the fucking Save the Earth theme always plays over the beauty shots. And it gets so old, and it's so annoying to watch and listen to at the same time. It gets old. It gets really old and it's so shoved down your throat. It's not even funny. So yeah, I definitely say that that is this movie's biggest problem is the forced environmental message. I mean, it would make it would make Captain Planet say, "Dude, you need to be a more, little more subtle than that." But with all that said, I still do consider Godzilla vs. Hedorah to be an extremely underrated and extremely masterful kaiju film. Um, it's got its flaws, yes. But I really, really, really don't care uh, about all this movie's flaws. I love this movie to absolute death, uh, which is why I'm not going to be rating this movie on different scales. I'm just going to rate it 
based purely on how much I enjoy it. I could watch this movie any day and still be thoroughly entertained all the way through, which is why I am bumping up my rating of uh, Godzilla vs. Hedorah, like I did with Godzilla Raids again, to another perfect solid 10 out of 10. I love Godzilla vs. Hedorah so much. It's one of my favorite Godzilla movies and also one of my favorite kaiju films. Mwah, love this movie so much. So with all that said, push the comments down below and let me know what you think. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your friends. Look forward to another video that I'll be posting later tonight where I review a certain Yashiro Honda movie that has long since been uh, nearly forgotten and has been sought after by so many. Um, and as always, go out and if I don't have my shades on me. If you're going to go out and save the earth and make a movie about it, don't be so forced. And I'll see you guys in the next video.